Well, Frank Om is an expert on North Korea at the United States Institute of Peace think tank. He also served as a senior advisor for North Korea at the Department of Defense. Thank you very much, Frank Om, for joining us. Was this anything more than a superficial photo opportunity? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. I, I understand that there are legitimate criticisms about this being a, a photo op, reality TV show. Um, but that being said, there is a big takeaway uh, from this meeting, which is that President Trump and Kim Jong-un agreed to begin working-level negotiations. If we were to believe the word of President Trump, they agreed to uh, return to working-level negotiations in a few weeks' time. So I think it remains to be seen whether they can actually make progress from those negotiations, but that is significantly uh, an important step uh, given the, the stalemate that we've been experiencing for the last uh, several months or so. Right, and do you think working-level negotiations, if you can hear me all right, do you think working-level negotiations, as they mentioned today, on the key issues are helped by big telegenic moments like we saw today? Um, I think, uh, first of all, we have to see if they actually take place. Remember about nine months ago, Special Representative Stephen Began was named as the, as the U.S. lead for working level negotiations, and they just never really materialized except for um, a few times uh, leading up to, to do preparatory work for summits. So until we actually see those working level negotiations, we don't know whether all of this pageantry of, uh, of summitry has actually helped. Isn't it deeply worrying that a despot presiding over a country with one of the worst human rights records in the world is being given this legitimacy? Uh, that may be the case. I certainly think that there are significant human rights issues uh, and we have to be mindful of that. At the same time, we make peace with our enemies, not our friends. Uh, we have to deal with uh, Kim Jong-un in order to uh, address uh, the tensions on the peninsula and ultimately achieve North Korea's denuclearization. But, I mean, is this the only way that that could be achieved, do you think? Uh, well, I, I'm, I don't know of any other way. You need, to, you need to be able to meet with the leader, certainly in a case in North Korea where uh, it, it, the top-down uh, uh, process seems to be more, uh, more appropriate because uh, no other uh, people within the, the North Korean system have the authority to engage uh, and make decisions. So you need to have uh, the ability to get Kim Jong-un's trust and make sure that he is fully bought in into the process. How optimistic how optimistic are you about the forthcoming months and any chance of progress? Um, that's unclear. I do think that both sides are committed to diplomacy. Uh, we know about Kim Jong-un's uh, imposed a deadline for uh, salvaging diplomacy by the end of the year. I think um, Kim Jong-un and President Trump both have a vested interest in, in uh, seeing a, uh, reaching a deal by the end of the year. Um, so I think that there is some hope, but again, we just have to see how it plays out. Frank Ohm, thanks very much indeed for joining us uh, from uh, the United States Institute of Peace in Washington. Thank you.